Sacramento at the State Capitol building, and we're interviewing Vietnam veteran. He's a combat veteran of the Special Forces, and uh, he's an incredible artist, John Nesbitt. So, John, I have three questions I'd like to ask you today. Yes, ma'am. And because I know you, and I know your incredible story, um, as a Vietnam combat veteran, I know you suffered from exposure to Agent Orange, but also PS, PTSD. Yeah. So how has art, creating your beautiful art, how has that helped you to cope with PTSD? Well, first is that the things that go through my mind that were negative had images. And as long as they had images, I was able to either sketch draw or do some watercolor at the beginning. So the more I try to express my negative and get it out from me, other people were saying to me, I like your colors, I like the way you draw. Then I got positive feedback. The positive feedback then led to a continual effort in art to have other people take a look at what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, and giving me a positive feedback from that. I know you've been an art teacher for a, a long time. So yes, how long have you taught art? And, and this is kind yeah. of a two-part question. So not only how long have you taught art, how do you teach it to prisoners or veterans so they can better cope with their own out-of-control emotions? Okay. I taught art uh, at least for 25 years. And in that time, veterans, people from prison, need to go back and understand who they are first. In other words, why in your post-traumatic, the level of trauma that you receive is based on the kind of life you've lived. If you've lived in New York City, your trauma is handled in a different way than if you lived on a farm. And if you lived on the farm, the trauma is a little bit heavier. If you lived in New York City, you come and deal with things and pass them off in a, mi in a minute. Uh, like an example would be the dog that I had got killed, uh, run over in New York City at 10 o'clock in the morning. By 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I had a new dog. My friend, who had a farm, when his dog got killed, the family had a prayer. They talked about him over the, over the dinner table. They waited another week, and then they got another dog. So how people deal with their particular trauma, a lot of times, has to do with the level of activity and behavior that they have at the end of their day. Well, you kind of answered the question, but I'm going to ask it in yeah. a different way. This is the third question. How do you, as an art teacher, persuade the people that you are teaching, whether they're veterans or incarceration, um, to turn that negative emotional, dark energy into something positive, lifting, and filled with light. How do you teach that? Well, one thing is is that I show people some of the things that I paint and I draw. If they like that, then they themselves want to get that same skill. But discussing the different levels of pain that you experience in your life has to do with how you express yourself in art. This way you're not expressing yourself in behavior because post-traumatic stress disorder, the disorder is behavior. And most people don't relate behavior to disorder. So what's happening is, is that you're out doing things that you don't necessarily approve of, but yet you're doing things that's disorder. If you can try to bring back the pain that you do and express it in a form of art, then other people can, one, relate to your pain, two, forgive your pain, three, can look at how they can express their pain themselves as young artists. So it's, it's a, setting an example by myself of what I've had to go through and how I use art, and if they like my art, then that influences them to try to plan or play some art themselves. Okay, John, can you tell me which one of these paintings you have on display today is your favorite painting and why and what inspired you to create it? Well, one, this painting here is one of my favorites because 
I have ocean animals here. I have the nature and space here because I combine the three things of ocean or water, land, and space. If I do that, the space factor is when I get off on my own and I can deal with my own pain. The earth factor is other people. And the ocean factor is when I can go out and look at the ocean, go swimming, and use water as a healing tool. So this painting right here has done a lot of things good for me based on the environment that I'm experiencing while this one guy right here is looking. And he's got a couple of little buddies over here who's represented so that nature is represented in a, in a, in a good way. This painting is winter and I struggle with winter sometimes because of the cold because my natural uh, blood temperature is 97.8, not 98.6. So when I'm in the jungle and, and people are burning up, I'm okay. But the minute it gets chilly out here, I'm freezing. So this I painted as a, as a positive negative relationship to what's happening in my life. <laughs>